Nigerian-American Esther Agbaje has won the Minnesota House of Representatives seat in the 2020 United States uh, elections. Agbaje defeated her closest rival, Alan Shilevsky, by a landslide, scoring a total of 17,396 votes, which represented 74.6% of the total votes cast. Shilevsky, a nominee for the Republican Party, scored about 4,128 votes, representing 17.7% of the total votes cast. Agbaje will represent District 59B in the Minnesota House of Representatives on the platform of the Minnesota Democratic uh, Farmer Labor Party, an affiliate of the U.S. Democratic Party. Joining me to discuss her win and what she's going to bring to District 59B, and actually telling us where that is, is Esther Agbaje. Esther, uh, good morning. I think it's what, 7 a.m. in Minnesota? Uh, 8.20. 8.20. <laughs> Congratulations on your, uh, on your victory. Uh, and uh, can, can, you, can you tell us, you're, on the, you're affiliated with the Democratic Party, yes? Yes. So in Minnesota, they have what's called the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. Um, and it's it's really just the, the extension of the Democratic Party in Minnesota. It has a, a slightly different history, very much focused on farmers and working people. Um, and so I think that's why they still have kept their se slightly separate but connected affiliation. All right, great. So tell us a little, at least for Nigerians that want to know a little more about you. Uh, you're born and raised in Minnesota. What's your history getting you to where you are now? Uh, yeah, so I am born in St. Paul, which is the capital city of the state of Minnesota. Uh, my parents came to the United States um, for schooling. Uh, they met here. They had a family here. So me and my two younger brothers. And um, that's kind of how we ended up. That's how we ended up in Minnesota. So um, so since then, Minnesota has been my home. I have you know traveled around the world and lived in other parts of the country, but I'm glad to be home in my home state. All right. And um, as far as the uh, District 59B, is that in Minneapolis? So what, 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 explain the district for us. At least where they, you're going to be representing in office. Right. So District 59B, the, there's tons of districts. I'm sure people know, you know, the governments will divide up different places. So the area that I represent is in uh, the largest city in Minnesota, which is in Minneapolis. Um, and so I represent the portion that's in downtown, which is kind of the center of the city and a little bit of a neighborhood known as North Minneapolis. Great stuff. So what are you going to bring to the district? This, this is the global business report. So we primarily talk about business. Is there what are the jobs like in the district where you're going to be uh, represent, representing? What's the local economy like? How, how are you going to improve things? Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, you know, what we've been saying throughout this whole campaign is you see that there's kind of a divide in this district. You have the downtown area that has a number of the businesses, um, you know, a number of large corporations are based there. But then in the neighborhood of North Minneapolis, we see a lot of disparities. So there's not enough jobs. The business district there isn't as, as booming um, for a variety of reasons. So one of the things that I want to do um, as an incoming member is to make sure that investments are coming into the North Minneapolis neighborhood. I want to make sure that, you know, the people in that in that part of the district are not being left behind, that the disinvestment that has been happening over the years stops and that we are investing in our black and brown businesses, investing in our black and brown business owners, investing in local jobs. So our young people don't have to feel that they have to leave home in order to have a good life. So that's the, those are the types of things I, I want to do. And I look forward to collaborating with a lot of the business leaders across the district, um, particularly in North Minneapolis, because I think there's a lot that we can do with sharing resources from, you know, the wealthy downtown area to making sure that we have true, strong investment um, in other parts of the district and making sure that we're, we're allowing people to live and work uh, where they want to. Great stuff. We just showed an image of the, uh, I think it's the Hennepin County Medical Center. Is that, uh, I think that's in Minneapolis. Is that in your district? And what's the medical sector like? Are any of the jobs you're trying to push in going to be in that sector at all? Definitely. So, yes, Hennepin County Medical Center is within the district. Um, you know, there will be a lot of jobs, I think, throughout the whole United States, but particularly in Minnesota for um, healthcare work, um, what I like to call the care economy, you know, our focus is on moving towards a green energy economy. And that means jobs not only in the green energy sector of like solar energy, wind energy, um, but also in the care economy that because there have been so many people, particularly in this district that have been affected by pollution and harms in the environment, 
there are people who need care from that. Also with COVID-19, we need more people who can take care of people who are suffering from the effects of COVID-19. So I do think like the adjacent jobs that have to do with taking care of people, teaching people, whether in the medical space or outside of it, those are all going to be really important jobs that need to come to this district. Great stuff. Okay, so you've talked about renewable energy. Joe Biden, uh, the news just broke that he's taking the lead in Pennsylvania. He talked a lot about mm -hmm. renewable energy uh, in his last debate uh, with President Donald Trump. So are you, I'm guessing you're in lockstep with uh, his goals for renewable energy and the jobs that they can bring to your district. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, along with many others, we really want to push hard on making sure that we are going fully into a you know, 100% transition into you know, green jobs and clean energy. So I do think that that means making sure that we are focused on renewable energy jobs. We are focused on ways to reduce our, our use of plastics, ways to bring down CO2 emissions. All of those types of things are very much in line with, um, you know, people have presented at the federal level what they call a Green New Deal, which is really a recommendations package. And in Minnesota here, we also have a bill um, to move forward with making sure that there's a Green New Deal in Minnesota. And those are the types of things that will bring jobs across the state, but particularly, I think, for my district as well. All right, great. So I'm glad you mentioned the, the, the Green New Deal. That's been a bit of a political football, if you will, in the United States because of what it means for the, I guess, the oil and gas industry, coal and so on and so forth. And also um, AOC and the squad. Uh, one of the members of the squad is Ilian Omar. So she, I know, I understand, won her district, uh, won re-election. Um, so, yes. yeah, so, and so she's from Minnesota as well. So you, are you celebrating with her as well as far as, far as her re-election is concerned? Yeah, we're all celebrating. We're glad to have, you know, we're glad to have our congresswoman back going to Washington, D.C. She's been doing great work for us for the past two years. And, I, you know, we continue to support her in that in that endeavor. And, you know, I look forward to working with her as a federal counterpart to our state, to our state and local issues. So definitely, um, you know, as, in ter as I said before, as the terms of the Green New Deal, you know, Yes, it's been looked at as a, as a political football, but it really shouldn't be because it really is about making sure we're moving forward into the next generation of energy, next generation of good, well-paying jobs. We need those living wage jobs across Minnesota and particularly in my district. And we also need to make sure that we aren't leaving people behind in this transition. You know, sometimes at the outset, this energy can be expensive. And so people say, oh, well, it's cheaper to use fossil fuels. But we know that it's not cheaper in the long run. People are getting hurt. People are getting sick. And so we do need to make sure that we are moving in that direction of transitioning to a clean energy economy. Um, Esther, I want to ask you about Nigeria. Have, have you been following the uh, NSARS protest and matters here? And I just want to get your feel. Is there any connection between you and, uh, and, and, and Nigeria? Have you been following any of the news that's been happening recently? Yeah. So, you know, my, you know, my solidarity is with the youth who are out in the streets. I mean, we need to make sure that young people are protected, that our governments are held accountable. Um, you know, we've had similar, uh, you know, racial equity protests in the United States. Um, granted, I think that, you know, the dynamics are a little bit different, but at the end of the day, everyone is talking about how do we make sure that we're holding our governments accountable? How do we make sure we're holding our public officials accountable? And so, you know, we've been protesting to make sure that we are reducing police violence and we're having, you know, racial equity. And, you know, from what I understand, the youth in Nigeria are protesting to make sure that their government is held accountable and is doing right by them. So I think that's a struggle across the world, particularly, you know, a class struggle. And I think that that's something that we can be in solidarity with. All right, great stuff. So Minnesota went for Joe Biden. Ilian Homar has been reelected. You've, you know, congrats to you again. You've, you've won office. You've talked about trying to pull people up. Um, are you in favor of higher taxes uh, in order to achieve what it is that you need to achieve um, with respect to jobs and social nets and so on? Right. I mean, it's about it's about fair taxing. Right. So we know that in this country that there have been a number of tax breaks for the ultra wealthy, uh, for major corporations. And so what we need to do is make sure that we're looking at our tax system and that we're taxing people fairly. And so oftentimes that means looking to make sure that people who are at the top are paying their fair share. 
And that's all we're asking for because we want everyone to contribute to our society. We want everyone to make sure that we're all benefiting from our society and not just a few at the top. All right, I want to ask you about Donald Trump. But before I do, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this question. You said you traveled around the world. Have you, when was the last time you visited Nigeria? Have you ever visited or do you plan on visiting? Ah, uh, you're going to put me on the uh, spot. See, I had to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Um, I definitely am overdue for a visit. But yeah, I think it was sometime in the past, definitely within the past uh, five or 10 years, somewhere around there. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, good. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll that's good. It's, it's at least recent. So so we we'll hope you come back soon. All right. Trump is challenging the results of the election and um, he's you know, threatening to go to court. What do you make of what's, what's, what's happening right now with the president, with the president? We have all, you know, all the votes that have come in. Those need to be counted. People, need, voices need to be heard. And we'll see where things fall. Um, you know, for the Democrats, I think things are obviously looking good, but the point is to count every vote because that's what our democracy is. Great stuff. Uh, once again, uh, Esther Agbaje, congratulations on winning uh, District 59B uh, in uh, uh, Minnesota. Congratulations to you. We hope to uh, speak to you again soon and uh, find how things, how things are going. And, you know, if you ever do come back to Nigeria, come uh, visit Nigeria again, we'll be happy to host you and take you around. All right. Uh, yeah. you <laughs> good stuff. Thank you, Esther.